hey everyone in today's video we're going to learn how to make a masher cake topper so I've got some purple fondant that I've coloured with sugar flow magenta and we're just going to roll some sausage shapes so two balls same size and then make your sausage shape these are going to form the shoes so you want to pinch the bottom slightly to make it flat this is so when we stick the soles on it sticks flush rather than being uh, rounded at the edge um, and leaving a gap. So just either pinch or push them onto your mat or your cake board or whatever it is that you're choosing to make your topper on. And then we're just going to put these to one side just to firm up a bit so they don't lose shape. With the rest, uh, not sorry, not the rest, with some more of the purple fondant, we're then going to make the dress for Masha. I always prefer to start off with more because I can take away rather than adding because that just takes too much time. So just making a cone shape using your hands tighter at the top than at the bottom and then you're going to pinch the bottom of the fondant. This is going to give the dress a flat edge um, and we also want to make the dress flare out a little bit at the bottom as well. So trimming off any excess and you can see I'm pinching and I'm pulling and that's just going to make the dress flare out a little bit. Once you're happy with the rough shape we're then going to make a line across the dress using a scriber tool um, and this is just going to create the difference between the top of the dress and the bottom of the dress. Using your thumb to push in around the bottom of that line and that's going to make it look um, a bit baggier on the top which is how she is in the cartoon. Again pulling out the dress more if needed and then we're just going to make a mark, an indentation on the front of the dress and this is where her white uh, shirt or t-shirt is going to fit into. It's easier to do it this way than to make it white and add all the purple onto it. So next we're just going to make the bow that goes around um, her neck. Two balls and you're going to make them into teardrop shapes and then we're going to use the leafing tool or a Dresden tool, the sharp side of that one and you're going to make the indentations on there. And then you're going to pinch and put them into the shape that you want. So they should be pinched to either side um, and kind of like drooping down a little bit was how I saw it in the picture that I was using. And you're just going to use a tiny little bit of the purple fondant, just rolled into a sausage and flattened with your finger. And you're going to wrap that around the bow. And we're just going to put this to one side so it's got time to dry. So using some yellow, we're going to cut out some sort of like crescent shapes. Try to get them the same for each foot. And these are going to go around the top of the shoes that she wears. So just pushing those into place and using a brush with a tiny little bit of water just to sort of push the fondant down and make that line a little bit neater. We're going to do this for the other shoe as well. So once you've got those done, we're going to get some white fondant and just roll it big enough for the shoe to sit on and trim off any excess. And this is going to be a sort of like, a, I guess, a secondary sole. It's just going to be what goes between uh, this and the final layer. And you're going to do this with both feet, making sure that the yellow touches the white. There is no gap between them both. And then once you've done the white, we're going to do the same again, but with some purple that's just slightly thicker. So roll the sausage and then flatten it out. Put your shoe on there and then just trim off any excess. You're going to push this on the same way as before, but we don't want to hide the white that we've put on there. We want to keep that visible. And then once you're happy with that, we're then going to put in a heel line as well. So once you've done that for both shoes, we're going to pop them to one side just to dry. And then we're going to work on finishing the dress. So we've got a bit of white fondant that needs to be rolled quite thin. Um, and this is what we're going to place inside that um, indentation that we made earlier on. Now, it is just a case of trying to cut it the right size and trying to fit it in. So I did have to trim it down a couple of times to make it fit. And then you're just going to trim off any excess that's at the top. Just making sure that when you're pushing it on you don't lose the shape of the lines. So now I've just got some wire and we're just going to thread that through the body. Now if we thread it through first 
and then whilst it's in there gently just push with your fingers just so it goes into a different shape um, we want it to kind of come out and forward rather than go up um, you'll need to bend where the sort of shoulder area is and then again in where the elbow would go so just making some a sausage out of some white fondant we're now going to make the arms so you just have to remember to angle where the shoulder will be and then you're just going to push it into place now it's just a tiny little bit of water that's needed we want it to be tacky we don't want it to try and slide off and you're just going to push that in to position holding on to the wire at the other side so that it doesn't twist and then you're going to push the part on that needs to be stuck down now we can trim off excess for the arms it's, it doesn't matter that they look slightly longer now put the same on the other side and then just trim off with some scissors till they're both rough, roughly about the same length you can expose some of the wire if you want to so that when we stick on the hands it's got something to stick to We're just going to make sure that they're roughly the same size and make a crease uh, on the inside of the elbow where obviously the arms will be moved. And now we're going to do the face. So just using the skin tone Saracena, I've added a bit of um, chestnut and you're just going to roll it into sort of like a fat teardrop. Now her head is slightly bigger than her body, it's not in proportion. Using your finger, we're going to mark a cross where the eyes would go and then pinch in either side. And then we're just going to push up slightly for the nose. Marking either side with your fingers and then pushing up and pinching. And that's going to give us a rough guide for our nose. We're going to use the Dresden tool to go down either side. So you can see we've got our scoop there for the nose. We're just going to push in the eye sockets with your fingers as well. Rolling up over the brow area and then rolling down on the top of the nose. And you can just keep playing until you're happy with the shape. Inserting some nostrils and then just going around to create the um, outer nostril as well. It's just about practicing this technique to get the nose shape that you want. Don't be scared to re-go over the fondant or to push down a little bit. See I'm going over areas that I'm not too happy with. So now we're going to mark out the eyes. So we're going to dot the inner eye and the outer eye for the bottom lid to make sure they're roughly at the same place. And then you're just going to push in with your Dresden tool um, just to create sort of like where the eye is going to sit. Now you don't need to push too hard, we're not looking to distort the face, we're just looking to go, I would say, about half a millimetre from um, the fondant inwards. And we're just going to do this with both eyes. The reason that we do this is so that the whites can sit in the face rather than on top of the face. It gives it a more natural look. And you want to do this with both eyes, trying to get them roughly the same shape as each other. Next, with a scalpel, you're going to put a line across the mouth area and you're just going to lift up the top part of the mouth, pushing it with your finger, and that's going to create the top lip. So next, we're just going to open the mouth again with the Dresden tool and pushing up the top of the lip. And then we're just going to mark out the bottom lip with the Dresden tool as well. So again, it's just about going over, recreating lines. She's got quite a big smile in this one. So you want to try and make the smile quite wide as well. They always look a bit weird at this stage as well. So don't feel the need to start over. So we're going to mark in the cheek lines because obviously she's smiling and she's got quite large cheeks. We're going to do this on both sides of the face. Marking in around the eyes as well just to give it sort of like a, a bigger cheek, a bigger smile. 
We're going to push with our fingers and remove any excess. So you're just pushing down and pinching and lifting up and pinching all that area away. It's going to allow us to define the jaw better than it would trying to roll it all in one, one go. Pushing up the sides of the mouth and the cheeks. So you can see there I'm pushing it and it's bringing it up. And then you're just going to smooth over the areas where it's left an indentation for the fingers. Pinching the thumbs together around the chin. It's going to give us a really nice feminine chin. And just check the head against the body. It does want to look oversized. This is the kind of look that that cartoon is going for. So again, just carry on playing around with it until you're happy. Using the... Um, dressing tool just to create some little dimples either side and pushing the smile up as well pushing the insides of the lips down as well to create make that area a little bit more flat and just keep playing around until you're happy with the shape you can see that I'm going over areas I've already done just to give them a little bit more definition So now we've got the whites of the eyes, so I've got a small piece of white, rolling it into a teardrop shape and then I'm just going to push that on. So just smoothing it over with my thumb and my Dresden tool. You can neaten up the line as well with the Dresden tool, if it comes out too far you can push it back in again. You can see I'm just going around the eye socket. And then I'm just going around the top to create a top eyelid as well. So keep playing until you're happy with what you've got. And then you're going to do the same for the other eye as well. So now we're going to do the teeth. So just a small part of the white fondant. And we're just going to cut a tiny little rectangle out and then we're just going to set this aside to dry. Because if you tried to put this in the mouth right now, it's too tacky and too, uh, too warm so it wouldn't, wouldn't work well. So I've got some magenta that I've just added a bit of burgundy to. I'm going to slot this inside the mouth and this is going to create the sort of like back colour of the mouth. So you only need a small piece that will just fit in. You just want to slot it in through the mouth and then push it in with your Dresden tool. Try to get it in the corners. You want it to cover as much of the mouth as possible. And then I've got some pink that I've coloured and this is just going to be the tongue. So a really, really small sausage. Using your scriber tool to put that in. And then once it's in there, just pressing down and that's going to give us the line of the tongue. Now this needs to be a bit further back because we've got teeth to sit in front of this. So again, just a tiny little bit of water. This is the fondant that we had from earlier on that's had time to firm up and dry. And you're just going to trim it down. Now again, this is guesswork because you might put it in there and it might look overly big. So that looked too big, so I'm going to trim it down again. But you want to keep this, the rectangle shape. And you're going to push it in and then you're going to use the scriber tool just to create a line in the middle. And that's going to create the look of two teeth rather than just one square block. And you will just need to push this into place um, using your tools to make sure that the teeth don't fall back. And that they stay um, at the front of the mouth and straight. So once those are in place you're going to go ahead and put the um, lower teeth in. So again, using the same fondant, but it would need to be slightly smaller than the big teeth, for obvious reasons. So you're going to chop that probably in half. And then when you put this one in, you're going to cut it so that it's got four teeth, because she has four teeth on the bottom. So again, just marking in those areas at the, the top. So once we've done that, we've coloured some uh, fondant green and you're going to make two 
uh, balls roughly the same size and these are going to make the actual eye colour and so you're just going to stick them on again with a tiny bit of water so I stick it on uh, just in the circle that it is and then I push it to where it needs to go I find this the easiest way to do eyes you don't have to worry about painting and getting both exact circles and you can actually push them in place so that they're more identical. Once you've pushed them in, um, obviously the bottom of this eyelid, the eye is actually straight. So if you go ahead with your scriber tool and just push that in, it's going to make the colour go flat as well at the bottom. So I've taken some darker green and just coloured the outside edges of the eyes and again with the other side. So once this darker colour is on, we're then going to go ahead and paint, uh, pull this colour in so it makes a, a darker green but obviously different shades of a darker green. So just using a brush with a little bit of water on, um, you're just going to bring that colour in. Now I think I have a little bit too much water on the brush, that's why they went um, so dark. But just using a paper towel um, and a little bit of water, you can see that I'm just pulling the colour off. So it always wants to be lighter at the bottom than it is at the top. And you're going to match that with the other eye. If you make a mistake and you go onto the whites of the eyes, all you need to do is just with a piece of um, a brush with some water on, you're just going to wipe that excess off and it, it will just come off in one go. So I didn't realise this didn't record, so I've just put some freckles on and I've painted the lips in a dark pink. I'm going to put the uh, blacks of the eyes on and I've painted the top of the eyelid just in a dark brown. The pupils are just black bits of fondant. Now we don't need to paint any eyebrows or anything like that on because it's covered by the fringe. So I've got some uh, fondant that I've covered in, uh, coloured in honey gold and we're just going to roll out a piece of this that's going to make the fringe. So it needs to be flat on one side but the rest of it is covered by a hood so it really doesn't matter what uh, shape it's in. So sort of like a long kind of rectangle type shape. Trim off the excess off one side so it's nice and straight. And then you're just going to push this into position on the forehead. So smoothing out the top bit because you don't want to see any lines. And then with the scriber tool you're just going to go ahead and create the lines um, on the fringe to obviously give it a little bit of movement. I tend to do big lines first and then once those are on I'll go in again in the gaps and create some smaller lines just so that it's not so um, neat and tidy and it gives it a bit of a more natural look. So once you've done that again with some of the um, a gentle coloured fondant, rolling it out quite thin and you're just going to cut sort of a rough shape that comes to a point at the top. Now this is going to be her hood, um, I never measure anything out, I just literally cut it and then keep cutting it down until it fits. Again always go bigger because if it's too small you're just going to have to roll it again. So folding that top point and pressing it in slightly, now you don't want to press it so hard that it sticks together but you want to press it hard enough that it um, gives a little bit of a peak at the front. So while that's just firming up a little bit, some tiny white bits for the eyes. Now like I say in the majority of my videos these need to be on the same side of each eye. So if you put it on the right on the right eye it needs to be on the right on the left eye as well. So a little bit of um, skin tone fondant just for the neck. So I've used a cocktail stick that goes in between the body and the head. This will obviously support the head. 
and it'll just give it a little bit of sturdiness because it's in the body as well. So just push that on. Now it really doesn't matter the sort of like shape of the neck because none of it is going to be visible and um, it's only there to sort of lift the head slightly off the, uh, the shoulders. So try your hat on. This was too big so I had to cut out uh, cut off a little bit more, make it a little bit longer at the back. And if you have to cut it, just make sure you re put in that pinch at the top. That gives the hood the shape that obviously is in the cartoon that she's got. So I'm just again just trimming it down until I get the right shape you want the hood to sort of tuck in underneath the chin you don't want too much excess there because we've got to hang the bow there so just pushing it into place and once it's underneath the chin um, just apply a little bit of water and that's going to make it stick down it's quite when you look at the pictures of it, it's quite tight around her cheeks. Um, so you want a tiny bit of water just around the edges. Just one of the whites of the eyes came off there. So a little bit of water, sticking it on the top. And then I've pushed it around underneath the chin and just a little bit of water to stick it. And then the excess bit that's quite flappy, I'm just going to trim that off with um, my cutting tool. So a little bit of water just to stick it down to make it easier to cut. And just blending in that line because it is one straight line all the way down. And then doing that again with the other side. Now when you're drying this, I always dry it against something. It stops the head from leaning back. It stops the figure from leaning back if the head's too heavy. It allows the figure to dry in the position that it's supposed to be in. Pushing the back down so it's flatter. And then we've got our bow and we're just going to stick that on using a little bit of water. So you should have something that looks like that. And then the next thing left to do is to make the hands. So just some of the skin tone fondant from before, starting with two balls roughly the same size. And then we're just going to make them into a kind of like a teardrop shape. Or just a rough teardrop shape and then we're going to flatten it and that's going to give us our sort of starting of a hand shape so with scissors we're going to cut in the thumb so taking that part out and then with the scriber tool marking where the bend in the fingers will go and then with scissors cutting in the middle and then cutting those two pieces in half as well Roll in between your finger and thumb just to round off the edges of the fingers and then in your palm we're just going to roll just underneath where the wrist would be. Now when you do this it changes the shape of the fingers, it makes it look a bit more natural. Just a really thin wire in one of the arms because I didn't leave any wire out. Tiny bit of water to that and we're just going to put the hand on. Now you have to remember that on the picture that I'm using the hands are sort of out but slightly tilted up as well. Pop the other one on the same way. And then we've got the um, shoes to put on. Now originally you can see where I've pressed those uh, down on the shoe but actually when I put the dress on she leant back a little bit. So just some uh, magenta again and we're just going to put that 
on the shoe just to make it flat on one level. So just two little balls, a little bit of water to stick it on and just pushing that into place. So you should have something that looks like that. Again, pop it against something so that it stands up straight till it's dry. Some really thin strips of white, and this is just going to be the cuffs of the arms that she's got. So it's going to hide the join between the shirt and the hand. Needs to be really thin. Use your tool to push it, push it in place if you've got clumsy hands like me. And then trimming off any excess with scissors. I'm going to do the same for the other hand. Allow to dry overnight before putting it on a cake. Here's the cake that I added the topper to. I hope you've liked today's video. If you have, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. If you'd like to watch another tutorial, please click the links on the screen now. Thank you.